Welcome back, friends. And before we get started, I have some coaching announcements. Now, we are going to be launching a 10-week podcast contest. That means that we're going to be giving out prizes every Friday for those who are putting in reviews and five stars and sharing. Now make sure that you screenshot and you share with me on social media. Next thing, if you're local to Ottawa Hall, I have bike mechanical bike maintenance clinics that you're going to want to check out, learn how to patch a tire, change a flat, and then I have learned to group ride clinics. So if you're new to cycling and you're worried about how, how to bike with others and bike safely, this is a clinic for you. And then I have my online cycling skills program. The first one is a four hour cycling skills intensive. The next one is four weeks where you work one on one with me. The third one is a four video module download that you can work at your own pace. You can get all the details on my website, sylviedow.ca. Now the last part is the fitness component. It's hard to be a well-rounded cyclist without weight training and strength training. So I have launched a cycle fitness on-demand membership and this is for anyone but specifically I'm targeting those cyclists who want to be well-rounded and strong and improve their cycling and also into a, a life of longevity. Go to cyclefitness.online and take advantage of the free seven-day trial. Try it out. Check out the workouts. See what you think. Enjoy. And thanks for listening. Hey, everyone. Welcome again to Secrets from the Saddle with your host, Sylvie Dow. And I'm super excited to bring my friend and fellow cyclist from Ottawa to our podcast, this is Lyle Beatty. I met him when I used to race and then I used to go and bug him at work <laughs> and sort of stalk him at work and, you know, and uh, so, but I thought he would be a great person to bring on here because of his story. Now, I didn't know a whole lot about it. I know Lyle from cycling and I know that he was a director sports if for a high level junior race team. And so we're going to hear more about that. And we're also going to get Lyle's story and how he got into cycling. Because I always love the stories of how people found themselves on the bike. You'd be surprised um, where, you know, how we all got into cycling. So welcome, Lyle. Lyle, I really, really, I'm so happy to have you here (laughs) because he knows a ton, you know, like he's an amazing person to talk to when it comes to cycling. Like, um, and I used to see them on the circuit when we cross paths when juniors were there, but, uh, I think he brings a lot of information, um, to the table when it comes to cycling, but I'm really curious. I'd love to hear about how you got into your cycling and your goals back when you were racing. So take us back to the day when you got on the bike. So back in the day, I was a runner. I was a football player. Then I went to a runner. I went from 230 pounds to 145. And I had a coach back in the day that one, well, I had a couple of them, but the one guy was really, really like, just go, go, go. So I didn't know about, I didn't know about like kinetics and and biomechanics and stuff like that. If he told me to run up hills for the whole day, I'd run up hills for the whole day. It was kind of like, and then that translated into my cycling too. So I got a bad injury. I had a patella injury. And then, so then I started riding just for recovery. Then I started liking it more, but I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Right. So, um, (laughs) it was, it was, okay. How old were you when this happened? 18, I guess. Okay, so oh, you went no, from... Oh, happened like 16, 17. Okay, so that was in your football So I started career? running. I was under... Yeah, I played football for a year. Then I went to... Uh, and back and then went to went to track and like cross country and stuff. Oh, okay, cool. Different from 230 to 145. That's... And then, yeah, it was crazy. So then I didn't know like about certain things and races and stuff. And then uh, I started doing this and that. And all of a sudden it led to this. And then I... Got involved here. I moved from North Bay to Ottawa. Um, it was like, hey, it was just, it was just a free for all, right? Like, you just <laughs> Isn't it like that back in the day, like the '80s, kind of like yeah. Oh, but it's just like, 
there's just certain methods to the madness and I didn't mm -hmm. figure them out yet. Mm -hmm. So I didn't progress as much as I wanted to. And then I almost had an opportunity, but that didn't go through. Uh, All right. Well, tell us about the opportunity. Action. What kind of opportunity is this? I met Des Dickey, one of uh, Kurt Hernett's coaches. And long story short to this guy, I, he wanted me to ride the track. Eric Wilberg went with him, one of her buddies. Okay. And uh, he had him. So he says, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then, so that didn't turn out because I was with blah, blah. So then I came to school here. The national team was based here. I'm like, hmm, put two and two together. I went, okay. Then I met some other buddies that were trying to help me out and stuff, trying to get me to learn the ropes a bit. Yeah. Um, I think I was too concentrated on a couple other things to, to focus. I think I was focused on too many things to focus in on one thing. Oh, so then it took me eight years to get my three-year piece of paper due to some red tape. And then uh, I wanted to- What kind of paper? Uh, my, my degree. My degree. Oh, okay. Okay. Your degree. Tenor or golf. So right. I was trying to do that. And then I had my bosses, they were going to give me time off to go train in Tucson, for mm -hmm. example, mm. Uh, or in Europe. Um, an opportunity almost came up in Europe um, after I, I knocked my, my eye band. So what happened was I got a couple, I had a couple coaches and they were good. It's just, I didn't know about certain things and rest and stuff like this. And Isn't that they what tells your you coaches are supposed hours, to teach you? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, they are. I think like, coaching well, back then was kind of like, just go. Like you well, said. He gave me a book, right? like, yeah, he gave me the Greg LeMond book, which was great, but, or the other book or whatever, told me to do that. That's great, but if I can't use you as a reference, as a lot of guys do now, mm -hmm. you know, as you know, it's it's different. Like, if you get an injury, how do you take care of it? I didn't know that I had a class four arterial band snap until I went to a race in Mont St. Anne, and I was trying to get on the provincial team here. And I talked to the guy, this Tim guy in, in Toronto, and he's like, if you do well, you get top five or top 10, you prove to us, we will put you on the provincial team for nationals. I think they were in Chikudami at the time. I'm not sure. It's wherever they were in 96. Yeah. Like, okay. So I didn't think anything of it. I would race in Ontario and stuff and this and that. And I promised uh -huh. my bike. I didn't, it was just, it was a shit show. Pardon my friend. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So, yeah. To what we know now, to what we do then, oh my God, I would, it would be completely different. Right. Uh, but, you know, the path is what it is. You know, you don't cry over the skill build. Nope, you move on. Mm -hmm. So then uh, I saw Chess Law a couple times and then um, had some experience. It was fun. And then we even went after some rehabilitation and stuff. And uh, the doctors told me to do, to go run in the pool, go do this and that. So I'm like, okay, fine. Maybe it'll strengthen it. Maybe you'll be able to race. So they took me to Windsor. I went to the Windsor uh, Criterion Chicago series, I think it is, Erie Street, and the yeah. ones in Detroit. I tried to do a sprint, and it went again. And I'm like, well, I guess this <laughs> is my drink. I'm going to be support crew. So I was. And then, uh, so then we fast forward. Uh, I met Merrick, Missouri, but I couldn't afford him. So he told me after my injury, he would take me to the Olympics. And I'm like, okay, fine. I, anyways, whatever happened, happened, and we didn't go with Merrick, and then another opportunity Okay, okay, came okay, up. okay, slow down. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did you finally get a coach that could, that directed you towards, like, a yeah, major but then I got, goal? Then I, yeah, I had this coach in Ottawa, and then this other guy, too. They were good, and then I got, I did an oopsie at work when I was working. My foot got caught through a board. I sprained oh. my MCL. I was supposed to do the track provincials. I would have flew. Like I would just, it would have been the combination of me starting, I guess, wouldn't have been going to the Olympics, but it would have been to a higher level. Right. Because of that, I couldn't do my objectives. My doctor said, if you do this and you use these gears you're telling me you're going to use, then you could basically blow your MCL. And I went, my medial collateral ligament. So I went, yeah. Well, Okay, so then we backed off. We had some fun, this and that. My coach was pissed, but what are you going to do? Went with me, and you know. Anyways, oh. it is, it is, so. it's it's done. So then we move on. Uh, I get a full time job. I almost win a race in. Uh, I took a buddy down. I almost won a race in um, somewhere down south as a cat three. I went down, and then uh -huh. I didn't know. He didn't feed me bottles. I was so mad. I didn't want to drive him back to Ottawa. I was just so pissed that day. <laughs> so it was really, really bad. I was about to win, but I cramped up. I had no liquid in me. It was brutal. I was really hot. So yeah. anyways, hindsight's uh, 2020. So then we did some other stuff and then I uh, got some opportunities. 
I met Cheslov somewhere. We started talking one day and then just happened. And then uh, I went and helped the Ontario team and I helped the local team here uh, at the Quebec Montreal. And I helped uh, the Ontario team somehow. I wiggled my way in to, to, at the Nationals with Team Ontario. So, <laughs> yeah. Like Barry Road Forest and stuff. Greg Bolo was on it. So, you know, so it was kind of cool. Uh, neat experience. Met some directors and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. for Mark, Wolf, uh, Mark uh, Walters at the time, wrote for Navigators. I think he won. Did he win that year? No, won it. Well, he either won or Dominic Pro won one of the two. And then uh, I love uh, all these names. I can never remember names. You're amazing yeah, yeah. at it. <laughs> so you know what I mean. So then uh, it was. I think it was Dominic Pro the one. And then uh, long story short, we fast forward. Mm -hmm. I said to. Uh, Beeman at, uh, with Navigators, I said to him as a joke in 2003, I said, you're going to the Giro next year. Why don't you take me under your wing and uh, teach me how to be a, a proper director sport tiff? And he goes, you're serious? I'm like, yep. So I didn't think anything of it. The guy called me, but we never got in touch. So it would have been, I would have been, I would have had a job with the Navigators. That was the plan. Oh which my is God, now, that would have been awesome. Yeah. We'll hang out in Europe. Local. Yeah, hang out in Europe, exactly. But it didn't come to fruition. I saw him two years later when I ran a team where we almost won the first stage Tour de Beauce, which was my mm -hmm. real first DS experience, thrown in the fire big time. Uh, <laughs> putting a team together in a week and then getting fourth on the stage because I forgot to tell this Torben Veets guy, there was a left or right hand turn with the last before the sprint. And he grabbed me and said, you stupid blah, blah, blah. You forgot to tell me it. I was like, I didn't know, right? So just... And then, so then 2007 rolls around, um, Cheslov and me and Steve meet somewhere. We start chatting and stuff and then I guess the rest is history. So we started as a club and then the next year we did the Tour de Beauce as a, as a we went from a club to a, a Cycling Canada team. So what team. club was that? Uh, well, I have the old jersey if you want to see it. You want to see well, I love, thing? yeah, bring it in. Okay. Why okay, not? Hold on, hold on. All right, give me, give me one sec, okay? I'll okay, go get okay. it. Okay, he's going to go get it. All right. So, guys, you got to make sure to go to the YouTube channel and watch this live because one of the things that I love about doing this these interviews, and it used to be so a little bit more it's fun because I used to do these live, is um, that we get to see stuff. Right, and I used to be on location, and and now, all right, Lyle's going to show us some some of the old jerseys. Um, I only have one because I've given a lot away. So, oh, geez, really? Oh, you don't this, have a closet this, full of jerseys like everybody else? No, we gave them to the Cubans. Oh, so. see, that's good. We actually send uh, our stuff off the, you know, the last years of well, last. We, we have a, last we have a team in Cuba, but we'll talk about that after. So this oh. was the first jersey. Can you see that? Yeah, bring it down a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, Bella Select. Okay. There you go. So that oh, was, that the was first from Shadigay, no? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, yeah, the team's based in Shadowgate. So okay. um, we uh, we did that, and then we went Cycling Canada Trade Team, which was another uh, like just throwing, going some with the Sharks. Like Symmetrics and Techos were fighting for it. Swain Tuft won it by. Oh my God, it was three seconds or something. That was insane. Kind of like what Greg LeMond did to Laurent Fignon back in the 89 tour. It was nuts. See what, so, I'm, see what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, he remembers all this stuff. It's so crazy. Yeah. And then <laughs> 2009, after we, we wanted to go pro, we, we announced we were going to go pro. The economy hit. But as we know, Canada is known for hockey. Right. And now one of the bigger coups, soccer and now basketball because of what the Raptors did last year. Mm -hmm. So because we don't have velodromes all across the country, which we're slowly starting to change now. Yes. Uh, in Belgium or France or Spain mm -hmm. or Italy or even Australia, because Australia put all that money into the into their their sports teams before the Olympics, which we right. probably wouldn't have did. We have the Mountain Velodrome, which is huge. So Yeah, we're uh, gonna have Bromont too soon. Bromont's gonna come up. They're yeah. building one in Edmonton, they've got one in Calgary, they've got one in Van Bur uh, Burnaby. Burnaby, yeah. Yeah. And then they've got one down in Dieppe. So it's not, it, 
it's, you know, so you don't have the, the socialization that you do for the kids. So anyways, so back to the story. So 2009 comes, we all go to Cuba right. and we're in, uh, I, yeah, I couldn't, anyways, it was a bit of a shit show. Uh, <coughs> they all rode down. I couldn't find my pedals. So I switched with a guy with pedals. They were what? in my bag. Yeah, it was nuts. So they went and watched Bauer when Bauer was there was with uh, Planet Energy. They went and talked to Bauer. They rode into, uh, what is it? The other side, Sa Santiago, Santiago de Cuba. So on the other side, near Guantanamo Bay. Yeah. So um, I didn't get to go in, in with them. And then, so then we all get drunk and we're like, well, what are we going to do now? Like the, per, the, the continental thing didn't happen. Let's get drunk. Of what <laughs> oh yeah. Get hammered. And then uh, I brought up a, a notion. I said, one of the three of us take a group of kids because we have 13 or 14 year olds right now and groom them and see how far they can go. Is this the Cuba kids? No, this or is our here. kids. Okay. Is, so, is. okay. Is this in 2007 when you started? When you 2009. guys were talking about it? 2009. Okay. 2009. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Keep so, going. Okay. So then uh, we did that. We won uh, the Marty Lachine that year with Felix Cote, Cote Bavette. Um, and then things just started spiraling just slowly. We just, we just kept winning and winning and winning. Like one year, we're one of the winningest junior teams in North America. We had like 67 wins. It was insane. So, cause we raced wow. there. Yeah, it was nuts. And, uh, then you had chess law as a mentor. You had Steve as a mentor. So then they could train them. Mm -hmm. Everybody believed in the program. The parents are a little bit off, but when you get kids with junior parents, eh, it's different. They, they're like hockey parents, man. They just, they want to control everything, which hindsight's 2020. <laughs> um, we maybe let them do their boundaries a little bit too much, but mm -hmm. that, the kids were pretty good. They, you know, they were a little shit at the time, but they were good. <laughs> they listened to us on the most part. So, but, they're kids. Uh, well, yeah, they're you know, kids. I know that they're, they, they bought into the program and they need to be, you know, they, well, they, they realized that yeah. like when, when, uh, Steve Barr called at one of our riders when he saw him and said, you know, if you keep this up, you could ride for my team in five years. And the kid just went, his jaw dropped, you know? So, uh -huh. and then everything fast forward, uh, the junior team went well, we graduated Felix to racing in France. Wow. Uh, some of the guys dropped out. Uh, Is he still Sean there? Was, How did he do? No, he's done. He's done. He's done. He didn't go to world tour. He chose another pass. So. Okay. He was good enough to do the world tour. Mm -hmm. If he would have did what he was supposed to do and do his proper homework, like a lot of guys do, like yeah. a lot of guys forget they, when they go from junior to senior, they think that it's easy. Right. And it's mm -hmm. not, you have to do the homework. So like my guys understand that. So like the and training. Try, yeah, exactly. You can't just, you can't go to France and think that uh, you're gonna do well in a race if you haven't put in the homework, like if you haven't gone right. to Cuba, if you haven't gone to Tucson or wherever, you know, just yeah. to get out and mm -hmm. do your specific training that you have to do. So, but, Does he? Yeah. Did he go there with a coach or like with a plan? Like how does? How do they like? Because sometimes I fig I find that you know when you hear a, a junior racer from here, they're like. Or they've been sent to Europe. What mm -hmm. does that mean? Like, do they go there with a coach? Are they going to join a, a club, a team? Who are they going there with? He, like, who? Do, yeah. Like, how do they example, get he, integrated he into what's going on there to so that they can advance? So, a lot of them really have coaches now. Like, and then we we do have coaches. Like, for example, when we had the junior team we would have an itinerary for them so that we're going these rides at a certain time. And this is when it's going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, um, now we ride with the Cubans. So it's completely different. Now it's just, it's, it's, you get fast very quick. And, uh, cause Cubans are very, very talented. So, so we, the junior team was done. We went to a U 23 team. Right. Um, I think we had provincial champ that year. I can't remember. And so 14. So then we go to books and, uh, we did a few things. So then we, went, we were a U23 team, a Cycling Canada trade team again, which they're now known as. So we had, uh, 
Max Jenkins ride for us at Bose. Um, a little bit of a so, steeper pitch. It, yeah, it went so well. for everybody, Bose is like one of the huge UCI races for U23, right? So it's one of the international yeah. events here in Quebec. Uh, yeah, Northern Quebec. No, and, not Northern and a lot of guys have graduated to the higher ranks and you see them in the Tour de France and stuff like that. So. Right. Yeah like Tom Scoyans, um, our ex rider, James Piccoli, which we'll talk about in a minute. But yeah. so then 2014, uh, we also had Matthew Genet. He went and won Green Mountain for us, which was a huge coup d'etat, which wow. he went with his brother. Yeah, so we, we, were, we were pretty good in 2014. So then we fast forward to 2015. Uh, Matthew was riding for us, won the first two races right off the plane from France. And then uh, uh, Garneau was Garneau, right? Garneau did their thing and they kind of controlled everything and because that's how it was. They were the team. In the race, right? In the race, exactly. Yeah. So Matthew was always outnumbered because we had the guys, mm -hmm. but they had basically more guys, which is fine. <laughs> the money. Yeah, that's what happens, right? That's when the tough. team has exactly. more people, it's, yeah. It makes it tough. So yeah. then... Uh, so then we said, okay, we're going to throw all So we went to, we went to Philly. Yeah. We went to Philly that year. That was interesting. We got on cycling news. We got some TV coverage. It was local because they were practicing uh, the helicopters for the women's world tour in the afternoon. So we ran in the morning. Uh, Etienne Moreau, who was an ex rider, uh, got it, got on cycling news for us going to the break and, uh, Matthew finished. It was just, it was, it was just an annihilation fest. Uh, <laughs> It was like Pierre Bellabo, Michael Woods got second. Oh, well, okay. Chelsea, Mike Mike Woods. Woods. Yeah, uh, yeah. Go, yeah, woo -woo. yeah, exactly. And um, so it was a good eye opener for us. The guys were on form. Everybody bought into it. And we said, okay, we're going to go to Saguenay and Bose. And we're just going to have fun. You guys are mm -hmm. on it. You, you proved that, you know, you did what you could at Philly against the top teams in the world. Like uh, Kyle Ruel was there with Piero Bellabo. He rides for, he rode for Bahrain McLaren last year. Uh, I can't remember if he's changed teams or not, but he's very, very good, very good Tour de France riders. One Tour de France stages. So that's who won, who won the race and raced with us at Bose. Mm -hmm. I, our team didn't go to Bose. Uh, we got some guys on a team. We tried to get Matthew on a team. Or did we get Matthew on a team? I think we did as well. Uh, it wasn't as good for us as Saguenay. Um, we really put all our eggs in one basket for Saguenay. All the guys bought in. Uh, Green was on, Edward Green, who's, uh, we also got him on a pro team back in the day as well as Matthew Genet. Matthew Genet is a rider came from France, found us, and uh, uh, went on to a team called Lupus. He got third, he missed second place. He was sprinting for second behind uh, Bruno Langlois, who won the stage, by the width of a tire. It was between uh, him and a called Stephen sucks. Keeping from Ottawa. And uh, that was our biggest coup. We had a podium at a UCI race, which never happened to the team. And it was just insane. Like we were being interviewed by French TV, French CBC was there, French uh, TVI was there. It was the papers. Matthew was the star of the day. And uh, so that was cool. And we're like, okay. So I went and helped CCB, uh, it's a team from Boston mm -hmm. at Bose because we weren't, we weren't originally supposed to go to Bose because we had chose we were going to go to Philly and do everything for Saguenay. Right. And then after that, we got Matthew on. Matthew went to Lupus that year, did really well at the Tour of Alberta. And uh, oh, the okay. guys were there. And then we sort of lost a few guys, as you always do. Yep. Uh, because you wanted to graduate, right? So yeah. uh, James Piccoli came on that year as well. That was in. Uh, How do you find your guys? He found us. They find, they find us. Like I got a guy from Toronto that found us through. Through my social I guess media. you don't have to recruit you do you mostly have people who approach you about joining and wanting to advance or wanting the the coaching and the the instruction and um, the, the mentorship to go to the next level and they find yeah. you yeah like when we had James Piccoli right in 16 uh, we almost won cat skills with him uh, he finished maybe four seconds off Matteo Delsin and Alex Cataford, who now uh, Alex writes for Israel Startup Nation along with James Piccoli and a few others, uh, Mike Woods, for example, because he just changed teams. And uh, was Mike and, Woods one of your teammates? No, 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 Mike, okay. Mike never came with us. So okay. but we all know Woodsy. So, oh, yeah. 
Uh, then yeah, it was we were on it. We 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 sent three guys. It was James uh, William Blackburn and uh, Cameron McFadden, and we were ready to take take it to them. Take you know, do battle, and we did. The only thing that James didn't reason why James didn't win and Cameron to win the stage. The goal is for Cameron to win the stage and James to win the overall. He had a bike mechanical, so they switch bikes. So there's a teammate that's right there. You know, he's mm -hmm. got your back, like you see on TV and stuff. Yeah. And uh, Cameron uh, for build this winning the stage, tried to get James as high as he could, and uh, and then Cameron finished. And but you know, it, we finished fourth overall. But it was it just showed, and then. Um, we had a bit of a hiccup at Green Mountain, just something happened. And then this is bike racing as we know, <laughs> but. All right, you have to elaborate on like, well, kind okay. of like whatever so, happened, happened. And like, well, tell us. I did an oopsie, I drove, I drove to another part of Vermont instead of going to the feed zone. So I. You I were in the in wrong a, like, area? I was in the wrong area, yeah, yeah. Oh, wild. Yeah, it was bad. Did you not um, read the manual yeah i didn't read the manual oh. so we we uh oh, give me your hand yeah i know bad that, yeah. director that, sport uh, tip yeah, holy i know so <laughs> well it was my mistake I just, read, I just said the wrong the wrong feed on our garment that's all like on the gps so oh. it was a mistake i learned from right so um because i had double checked to make sure that was the right one. Oh yeah 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 it's done it's done okay so it was mine i Hindsight's like, 20, where, 20. Why is there nobody else here? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, why the hell am I at Ben and Jerry? So yeah, I drove halfway across. <laughs> it was nuts. And uh, James was on, James was on good form because he did he 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 uh, podiumed in. Uh, well, he did a couple big things that year. He broke away with Mike Woods and uh, and uh, another big Quebecer. His name's Antoine Duchesne. And Antoine Duchesne, and then another, oh, what's the guy? He's a doctor now. He wrote for Galno as well, uh, for Galno. And uh, Antoine Duchesne was on Europe Car at the time, which is now, uh, what's the name of the team? It'll come to me. So he was riding World Tour. So he broke away with these guys. Plus, he, he had just podiumed at the Quebec Provincial Championships for the time trial. And I believe he did really well in the road race as well. So he was on it. Like, there was just, it was the culmination. Like Green Mountain would have been the culmination for us having yeah. a crazy year. So then we let him go the next year. We reformed again, got some guys. Uh, wow, all this restructuring, is that tiring? It is, but it's like Steve Bauer said too, right? It, it's just. You, you have, have to, I guess, have to, because. You have, you have, it's cyclical, right? You, yeah. have to, you have to keep building to make yeah. it back. Yeah. Um, we didn't want to let James go, but it was time for James to go because right. we right. had the resources. Right. We just didn't have enough resources for him to go to the next level. And now we know where he right. is, but we're, yeah. we're happy that we were part of that. Yeah. And now I can honestly say, you know, I'm like hugging, basically kiss him on each cheek that, you know, he was well, one of the guys. I find, know? you know, it, I think it's just one of those stepping stones, right. For athletes, you know, they they get into your program, they yeah. do as much as they can, you give as much as you can, but mm -hmm. at some point in time, if they're gonna go to the next level, they need to be put shot up to the next level, right? And I mean, that, but that's what you, you are. You guys are like a development stage yeah. for these young yeah. riders. And I th I'm, I'm glad, like it's, it's amazing that that's around and uh, that we have something like that. now. Let's just talk about um, okay. And then nineteen, we we had our we had our, our swan song. Like eighteen was bad. Uh, it was anyways. Let's not talk about eighteen. Eighteen's history. So uh, <laughs> we, we did oh, well at cyclocross. We didn't do well on the. We did well in some road events, but not as much as we wanted to. Nineteen. When the guys went, we knew it was going to be a magical year. We just knew. yeah. But did you just say like eighteen? Maybe it was just like a development year to get everybody on the same page. Because when you bring new people in, like. You have yeah, to they weren't by, they weren't, they were, the, the reason why I think it happened too was in hindsight now, because it's three years ago, yeah. people didn't buy into the program the way they did in 19. Right. If you, you, it's like, it's like, for example, like for Israel Startup so Nation when or you whatever. Say, or, Lyle, when you, you say gotta buy buy, into it, you got to buy into it. When you say buy into the program, what does that mean? Like I can, I so, can, I have an idea of what it means. 
but what does it mean you for you guys at your level? At our level, yeah. um, everybody has to be on the same page. Uh, anybody can win it. Anybody can win or podium or will sacrifice oh. for anybody at any time. Okay. So you if don't you have a plan do as to like whose race it's going to be like, say, Sagan A, you're like, okay, we're going to work for this person. So everybody's kind of like, is that how if, it works? If, for example, you were on it at mm -hmm. Charlevoix, which is yeah. a, another big race as I've kind of a stepping it. stone. Yeah. Yeah. I've raced there. And you prove to us that you're ready to go to that position at Bose, then we'll put all in, we'll put it all in for you. Okay. But you have to realize if something happens, there has to be a plan A and a plan B. Mm -hmm. uh, if if plan A doesn't work and something happens to you for you know just you get a flat an untimely flat or something okay at the wrong time or something and the plan has to change you have to adopt to that change if you adopt to that change like they did in 2019 everything will uh, what's the word I'm looking for everything will make it like will make itself known I guess like for example they went to Mallorca Alex got a podium with some guys that were U23 guys that do it's uh they have like a U23 cup that goes around mm -hmm. Spain we're like okay every race we were it's I'll use the program you've uh, the, the phrase we're you're in it to win it regardless right. of what sport it is you know we can you know we can go over the so do you uh, do you so is that everybody's meant is that everybody's um mont I guess well let's just say mantra for the team like you don't have like your guys there isn't like one person you're working for like everybody is in it to win it or do you have like a strategy for ra certain races like mm -hmm. certain mm -hmm. races like we're gonna work that person mm -hmm. to the front or we're gonna work yep. that racer to the front so that's yep. that's your like if we say we want somebody they... to break you know yeah right sort of interrupt yeah Okay. If, if we tell you you're going in the break, we want you to go in the break and shake things up and then we want to see what happens, right? Yes. Um, like I was watching a race yesterday from Ireland, Michael Berry, who we just, you know, we mentioned before, mm -hmm. was a, a big cyclist that rode for Enios, and he was on this other team, Columbia, back in the day. What he did was he went out and then another guy, one of his teammates came up, it was, it was part of the plan. Right. He would, he was basically a rabbit, so... You know mm -hmm. how they you see the rabbits and like the running and stuff. So he right. was kind of like that, but on the bike. Right. So he wanted to, he wanted to get pacer the people bunny. out. Exactly the pacer bunny, yeah. and uh, we did that before. Like we, uh, one of the guys went in the break at Saint Martin. Uh, what race we won with Matthew in uh, 2015, which was my birthday present or 16, 15, 15, and. Uh, <laughs> pointed at me and said, that's your birthday present in French. I'm like, okay, because my birthday that day. So that was kind of a yeah. cool present. Oh, same up, Sam. That's uh, always a good race. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so so then we uh, we did that. And then uh, every race, the guys were in it. Like, when you're in it to win it, like if right. you're a rally or you're an Ineos, uh, you know, like teams like that, or uh, Pro Bacalac, I don't know what the new name of them is now because they have, but you know what I mean? Like, or yeah. a Hincapie that won the Tour de Beauce with us. It's, it's a different level, man. Like right. we went to Charlevoix and everything was just, it was crazy. Matthew Zimmer was riding for us. Matthew Zimmer was supposed to ride for us for the three races, rode for this other team because they didn't want to give him up for the, the two races. We got him for Beauce. He won Charlevoix. We finished the guys were in everything at Charlevoix. It was insane in right. the Criterium and the Rotaries. We were there. And then we went to Saguenay. We got a guy, Boris Corinne. He won the Tour de Guadeloupe twice. We had uh, another guy, uh, Maximum Moreau, like, loaned to us another team, Premier Tech. And then uh, we had all these guys. We had all these guys. And, like, all our guys were going. So everybody right. was all in. Right. You know, it didn't matter. And then uh, two of our guys went off, and uh, the goal was – to get uh, Boris or Latiel into a jersey. Mm -hmm. We've never been that level before. So now we're playing with the big dogs. Like we're, right. we're, we're punching above our weight. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but everything, everything went to plan. They broke away for a hundred kilometers. I, we just told the guys, we said, have fun tomorrow. If you want to go, go, you know, but 
we want us we would like to, we'd like to fight for that KOM jersey and what do you guys think we put our hand we put our hands like that and we went we're all in so uh, ah, all in. we only we only lost the jersey by two points because at the criterion every every race like every part of the yeah. series with we were with Floyd's it was just we're on it we were on the same level as Floyd's oh Floyd's and yeah we, I remember that team you know yeah. and when you're on the same level as Floyd's a rally going to Bose, like, as you know, Bose is a coup d'etat, like, it's the one. Yeah. If you <laughs> if you want to make a name for yourself, that's where you do it. Right. And to be here in Tour Utah or the Tour Tour Gila. Uh, uh -huh. So, Lyle, what would you say, level. yeah, what would you say your biggest challenge is working with a junior team? Like, say one or two things that you come to, well, to now, mind right now, now you like. Oh, you mean like when we were with the junior team? Yeah. Just well, okay. Yeah, I guess at that time. So one of your just, biggest challenges. They they had like you had guys that just thought they were all that, and if they're mm -hmm. not if they're not part of the team and they're an individual, there's no I and team man. It's got to be T and team. Yeah. So, you know, you have the guys that are winning, 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 but then when the other guys want the chance, they've just they've always been helping the guy or whatever. You know that they they didn't think yeah. that they could that they were capable. So then they would get, they'd sort of, I guess, mold themselves. So you, just a, just a positive attitude about things. Just sometimes they were too negative, I guess. I guess that's the easiest yeah. way to say it. Mold themselves. Okay. They were too hard. Well, we'll put it another way. They were too hard on themselves. So right. if you're too hard on yourself and you're not having fun, like we tell all the riders, you got to be having fun. As you know, you tell your clients. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Team, right? If you're not having fun and you're not challenging yourself, then why are you doing it in any yeah. sport? Why are you doing it? Well, this is true. So, cool. so like so, in 19, like we went to Bose and just not like that. It was magical that week when we had Matthew Zimmer, we had Curtis White. That's was just a phenomenon. And he's mm -hmm. doing really well at cyclocross in Belgium right now. We had, we had Stephen Hyde, we had Boris, we had Barry Miller, who's an awesome climber. We had all these guys, we had all the tools. We took all the tools. Our guys were even, it was rubbing off on them, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then we finished eighth overall with Matthew. We finished, uh, uh, 12th overall at Barry, who finished fifth overall with this, the team. The four teams, wow. like it was Floyd's, then it was Rally, it was national team, it was Hinkby, then it was us. Cool. What was the name of your team at then, that time? Uh, Velo Select Racing Team. Okay, so it's still Velo Select. So now moving forward, like yeah. this past year, 2020, what did that look like? And briefly, and kind of, because we all kind of know it if you're racing or looking forward to race, like if you're sitting like a year ago now, everybody's right kind of like, okay, yeah. what's yeah. the schedule, you know, getting ready for the schedule for the spring, you know, and then in March, everything like freaking went to pot. Shut down. Yeah. <laughs> and they're so like, oh, we I got a whole year off. This is awesome. <laughs> I haven't had we that in a we, we had a rebuilding year because we knew that was going to happen. Ah, so that's well, so kind of worked it well for you. Yeah. And then Chesla and I went to Cuba. A couple guys were supposed to come with us, but they couldn't come because of school commitments, which was fine. Mm -hmm. They missed out on a huge thing. But so we have a team down there called Velo. In, uh, we have a shop. Chesla is a guy that owns a shop in Velo Select. It's in Trinidad. So Trinidad is on the, it's a Playa Ancon, which is in the southwest of Cuba. So yeah. you've heard of Santi Spiritu. Mm -hmm. Or, or uh, San Fuego is probably the biggest thing that people have heard of. So we're about an hour from San Fuego by, or 45 minutes by bus. Yes. So um, we're in that area. We're doing well. Chesla won a race. Our guys won the race. We won the race overall. I trained with the guys. I, I got uh, pro training. When for did two you go down? So you went down last year? Uh, yeah, I went last year. Yeah, for two weeks. So When was that? In the winter? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. To break so up the winter. Kind of before yeah. everything. And Chesla down. was going to do, Chesla won at Grand Fondo in December in uh, in Havana. A big, big, big one oh, was televised okay. on uh, their, uh, what's the name of the, it's, it'll come to me. Tell it, tell it, sir. It's broadcast all over the Latin American countries in Venezuela, Cuba. Oh, okay, cool. Even, he was seen everywhere. Oh, this is a big, massive race. And uh, okay, so we came back. I couldn't go to that. And then, we went and then um, they did the race as I trained. And then we came back and Chesla was doing a Grand Fondo in Morocco because his wife, Zara, 
is from Morocco and they want to see her parents because they haven't been over in a while. So mm -hmm. they go one and put two and two together and you know they what? did that. So then he won that over some big tour dudes. Nice. Uh, the guy that was in the tour, the guy who just won the jersey in Dubai, uh, like a month before that or a week before that or whatever. And then uh, the plan was okay. So then we had a couple guys. One of our guys was in California with the Nova Scotian provincial team. So we had a few guys. We Greg Boileau, who is, as we all know, Greg. Greg is mm. a very, very good guy, very talented. Um, and uh, he, uh, we did, and then everything, as you know, went to pot. Yeah. So we had to cancel that. Uh, the guy started riding inside a little bit about more about Zwift. Yeah. And Greg did well. Um, Cheslaw shop just went, just my partner, Cheslaw Lukasevich owns a bike shop in Shadowgate. The place went just through the roof. And nice. then uh, we couldn't, we were supposed to do a race in North Bay, where I'm from. Yeah. And we were going to go as it was an Olympic year and Cheslaw is an Olympian. So yeah. it would have been fun to bring the guys up there and show them my neck of the woods where, where I was born and stuff. And uh, it's always good when you have an Olympian in town. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. we were going to do some racing on Ontario. Uh, Bose was out of the picture. We didn't have the team to go to Tour de Bose this year. We wanted to come to Preston Street. It's a real local race here in Ottawa, part mm -hmm. of the, the Preston, uh, the Italian week. Yeah. And we wanted to, we wanted to, you know, showcase our sponsors and stuff there, but it mm -hmm. didn't happen. So, and then we got to do one race and we got a podium out of it uh, with Cheslov. Greg, we, Greg was, we thought was on the podium by the width of the tire. He missed the podium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the fastest race ever. Our guys all raced, and then now we regroup to 2021. Uh, Arthur Silver is with us. That's the, one of the biggest contributors to cycling. Oh. I have to give Arthur Silver huge props. I've for heard this. about this little switchover uh -huh. from um, Scott. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I uh, I also know his um, sister-in-law. Okay. Sister -in -law. Yeah, yeah, you guys took a big sponsor away from a, well, another club. So what happened was Arthur and Scott, they they were done. Um, we this is okay to put this online, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. but you know what what Scott and Arthur and Michael and Gordon those guys did was just it's just astronomical. The guys they put up to the world tour is just it's it's mind blowing, you know. Oh, they they were, they were doing they well, right? Like yeah. 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 Um, I don't know what happened, uh, but <laughs> the way that we saw it, Arthur would have been going, uh, they would have been continuing the relationship. I don't know what happened. You'd have to ask Scott. I've had so many people ask me this question. I don't know what happened. I didn't I realize Silber left and is working with you guys. Well, that um, just kind of happened. We, we just reached out to him and we didn't, we didn't think anything of it, you know. Yeah. We, I just thanked him for being the biggest contributor to cycling in Canada besides Sylvan Adams. And yeah. I, I it, you know, it, it's still mind blowing. He's with us for another year. Um, oh, that's he, awesome. Because I heard yeah. he's a huge cyclist himself. He is, yeah. 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 Well, that's and, so. How many guys do you have on your team now? Uh, 11. I think it's oh, 11. Oh, Frig, that's a good size. I think we're going to have 13. But like I said, like I was telling a guy from one of our potential sponsors, um, well, he was supposed to be a sponsor, but he didn't do it last year because of uh, uh. what was going on. And I said, I said, but how are you going to judge guys? You got one race to do. You can't, you can't go to Contra Cur and expect to, to, to like search out talent. When I'm looking at the guys in the Peloton, I don't know if he has a team, he has a team, he has a team. Uh -huh. So, Nobody's announced anything yet. So nobody knows who, who's where and who's got what. Oh, so, okay. Um, so is this kind of like, are you waiting for the calendar to be released in Quebec? Or do you guys calendar, have your... It, no, it's, it's released. Yeah, it's I know. Out. But dig, but oh, yeah. official, officially yeah. out there. Yeah, because uh, I have... I we're, Hey, our club has an event. I don't know if it's like... I know it's pretty small peanuts for you guys, but... Uh, it's local and if you have local guys and it's a time trial we have local guys so we got some local guys yeah 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 and it's yeah. a good time trial you know this the area of the the road yeah i ride it <laughs> yeah there you go yeah 
It's beauty. It is nice. And yeah. it's, uh, so we've have, we have our event back on the calendar, but that's, that's kind awesome. of exciting that, uh, you know, things now here's a question about sponsorship. Um, and I know that, you know, clubs of your caliber take a lot of money to run. How much as a sponsor for like a junior team would you typically be looking for or need to run? Always the now more the better. 13, yeah, I know like, more than the better. Yeah. Okay, what's the what's the lowest you you need to take? Well, okay, so it 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 depends on what they want to give, right? That's how you do the budget. Right? So you know you've got like you've got a level that's professional, then you've got levels that are lower. Yeah. Um, like if you're gonna do go you pay your ra racers, or what do you provide out of sponsorship? Is it just like race registration, race accommodation, race? Um, we have travel? in the past. Yeah, we paid for the tour de boats and stuff. Yeah. Okay, because I heard that when uh, well, UCI races are fairly expensive. Twenty thousand dollars. I was talking to a guy, and he says if you're going to do it right, it's twenty thousand dollars to do a race. We've always done it without staff. It's always just me and Chesloff, and maybe somebody else. Right, right, them. right. Well, oh, they have okay. mechanics and they have swanyers. Yeah. And I've been to Swanyer, and he's been he's been the mechanic. <laughs> I've, been Swanyer, I've been Swanyer. I've been led. I've been. I have. Been, yeah, I wore all hats. So, like when we we had a helper at Bose last year. And it helped us huge, man. Even, uh, uh, Oh yeah. It takes away some of the, the things that you don't have to think about. Right. It's like delegating. It's amazing. It's like, okay, <laughs> is it worth hiring somebody to do this stuff? So I don't have to think about like it. Like I went, mm -hmm. I went in the feeds. I went in the Ravi Tamal on the first day and it was fun. Cause I was hanging out with the Swannies that have been all around the world and stuff Yeah. and learn and chatting with the girls. And, uh, <laughs> the next day it was the most important stage. We mm -hmm. were on the goal. We, we were, the plan was for us to win that stage. I had to be in the car. So right. our guy went to the feed zone and he was cool with that. He had fun with the girls. The girls, I told the girls to take care of him. <laughs> then I went Make on the sure you're at the right spot. Yep. Yep. They, I told like, them. I said, Lyle, problems. you are never going to do the feed zone again. <laughs> I did the last day when Curtis was, uh, when everybody made the selection and, and a guy crashed in front of Curtis. And there's another thing too, is like, when you've got such professionalism, he comes and apologizes to us because he didn't win the stage. And Chesla and I are just mind blowing. Like, it's another word I could say, but we're mind blowing. I'm sitting there and, and then just, I was like, Ooh, wow, you know, sorry guys, I let you down, apologize to the team. And I was going, that's wow. just professionalism, you know? Yeah. So then it takes you to another level. So now, you know, if you go back to Bosch, you can't, you can't go without a team at that stature. You have to go guns a blazing. You have well, to go it, it makes it stages, easier. The overall or jerseys. You can't. Mm -hmm. You just can't. Yeah. And if you go, then you disrespect the sponsors. You disrespect the organization, the Federation, Cycling Canada, the UCI, uh, your riders, like, just mm -hmm. everybody. Like even the other teams. It's a disrespect. Yeah. So you know. So things have changed now. You have full blown. Uh... Well, yeah, like this year we've got a guy. He's an ex. Uh, he's an ex motorcycle guy. Um, he, motorcycle uh, pro. Yeah, he, he was a super sport guy. Now he's racing. And I just talked to one of our guys, Robert wow. Goodsell, who's written for Stefan Tremblay's team. He's going to ride for us. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and then we've got a guy. He's in Girona right now training. He's never raced before, but he's training. Uh, he's going to race for us, Greg. Uh, our two guys in the states, if they're allowed to come. Uh, we've got one guy out in Nova Scotia. I'm trying to get another guy from Toronto right now. He's, he wants to, he said he wants to ride for us, but I have, we're just playing telephone tag right now. And email yeah. tag and, so on. and, uh, so we want, like I said, we wanted to get more U23s. I have mm -hmm. some, but it's just, you don't know who's available. You don't know who's doing what. Right. So everybody's keeping their, their, their cards close to their chest. So. Right. Hmm. No, for example, well, like the budget could be minimum 10,000 to like 500,000 to a million. So like I said, the budget can go anywhere. We're getting a little off topic. We'll go back to the top. <laughs> I know because I think we need to wrap it up, but, yeah. um, but this is super interesting because like, you know, we're, uh, I think like the, the sponsorship part is, is one of those bigger things. Cause you know, I was just, you know, like over the summer, like how many teams didn't get to race like last minute because they're sponsors. No. Like I was just, you know, I, I, I uh, subscribed to Flow Sport and, you know, yeah, just so watching, I, yeah. 
yeah, just watching well, some Hinkapi, of the races. Did you hear what happened to Hinkapi? So I'll give you an example. So Hinkapi. No. Hinkapi I was looking at the was, women's teams. Yeah. And um, I can't remember what race I was watching, but, you know, like two teams didn't make it to the start line because last minute their sponsors pulled out and mm -hmm. they, they couldn't race. It's like, oh my yeah. God, how can that just happen just like that? It's crazy. Hinkapi so, did everything to Girona. So they were going to do a European calendar. They weren't even going to hardly race here. They had every everything in Girona. Everything would belly up. They uh, they stopped the team because of that. There's another like there's another big oh, team wow. that's got so many guys that has done so much stuff at the at the you know the former Tour of California, winning the Tour de France a few times. Like it's just it's crazy. So now hopefully things will reset. Mm -hmm. We can get, we can get a season. You can get your race in. Um, we get to do some races. Uh, the Tour de Beauce, like I said, the Tour de Beauce for us, I would, I have to go with a team that I had in 19. I can't, Chesla and I cannot go with anything but. You yeah. To, you can't. You have to go with something better. You have to go with something better. And then if you think that you don't have the guys to do it, then you don't go. You put, you try to get your guys on other teams. That's what you do. So. Right. Oh, okay. That's cool. What's, wow. So, like I said, it's just, we'll, We'll see. We're, uh, we're we're excited that Arthur's with us. Mm -hmm. um, it you know when when he when left left the sport. I don't know. Um, I had thought that they were the, the talent they had and stuff and everything else. Just they would he would he would have stayed in for more. I heard he was going to, but then I heard then I heard he was done. I only met him the one time at the World Cup for five minutes, and it's when he had two guys on the national. They had three or four guys on yeah. the national team doing the world cups. And I said, you must be excited, you know? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're having a great day. And I said, just thank you. Thank you for what you've done for cycling, man. Thank you. And he just looks at me and like this, you know? And then I, then I had talked to him. I've talked to him twice on the phone and, and I've talked to him through Facebook and stuff, but that's about it, you know? So I threw email, mm -hmm. but you know, it's just, it's, it's nice to have somebody like that. And there are more guys out there. Mm -hmm. who just don't show themselves. They, they for some reason they yeah they're like silent we are the silent investors yeah yeah well awesome and i'm super excited that uh you know i'm just uh cross my fingers that there will be racing regardless of what it oh, looks yeah. like yeah yeah cross your fingers cross yeah <laughs> because we're you know like we're looking at you know we like want to get our club into some events yeah not a racing team um, but, uh, I think we should have you guys back in like a year, see how it goes. Yeah. And, yeah. Like uh, I said, you know, we, we wanted, we want to do some things, but because of the, because of what was going on and, and, yeah. uh, we had looked at trying to maybe go to Europe and stuff, but just, it, it would have been, it would have been just a gong show because you have to quarantine. So then, but you get special permission if you're going to, if, if you get in, you can get invited to the organizer to do the event. So what do you do then? You have to quarantine when you, you have to quarantine when you come back. And so do you get, so do you get to do like they're having that, uh, the controversy with the Olympics right now and the Tour de France. It probably the same thing for us, right? So we quarantine, but then do we get to do the race or do we miss the races? And then that was the whole point <laughs> go there. You know what I mean? Yeah, you got to go ahead like a month ahead just to make uh -huh. sure you've, you've got everything lined up and everybody's okay. And yeah. you can travel and, and, you know, I was just talking, I just had somebody on, um, a coach from Finland that I just interviewed that I, I met and he was just talking about how things are shutting down there now. Um, like, you know, I was just talking to him yesterday and it's just crazy because he is building, uh, you know, coaching guys and sending them to Belgium to, you know, take it to the next level. So it, it's kind of funny. It's, well, we just don't hear everything that's going on period but no, you know no. we'll have to have you back Lyle yeah. and well, thank you. An thanks for having me you know well just... it's great to talk to you because like <laughs> I know you can talk a lot so you got you know so many people and uh, but I would be really curious to see how your your season ends up like you know say if we talk like next November or something and hopefully again yeah, like I said you know the the next like we always want to be bigger um, mm -hmm. and then hopefully well, yeah I mean that's what rain, you you know you take your experience and you, you, you know, you look for the kids or the kids look for you. Cause there's yeah. always somebody out there who wants to take their, 
their um, experience or their fitness or their um, racing capacities to the next level and they just don't know where to find them right and it's a uh, so anyways so grateful to have you here and special thanks to you and for who you are and what you're doing with the sport thanks. and uh, you know maybe we could get you and Cheslov and like the three of us That'd be cool. Um, or oh you Steve and Cheslov. Oh my god, that would be fun. And we just maybe do some banter back and forth. Maybe we can do we can set that up. And um, possible, you know, yeah. yeah, so let's do that. So thanks a lot, Lyle. I've so appreciate you and um make sure when this comes out that you share and oh, yeah. let you know just pass this around. Um, but with that, have an amazing day. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Oh, and before you go, guys, um, I just want to say thanks to all of our listeners and thanks for uh, your downloads and your comments. And don't forget to place reviews on Apple Podcast um, because that's, I think, the only place you can do it. But doing it really drives up this podcast to the top. And that's where I want it to go. So with that, have an amazing day and remember to ride your bike. Get out and ride. Get out and ride. All right.